Hello everybody. So today we're gonna to be talking about the diesel cycle. Um, basically, what you have with the diesel cycle is something sort of different from the auto cycle. Um, basically with the diesel um, engine, we have sort of a compression ignition engine. And basically what that means is, remember how I talked about in the auto engine, we have a spark plug that sort of, um, the fuel is, is loaded in already and, and it's compressed and everything. And then we spark it and ignite it and it, generates that work by expanding that piston and everything so a diesel engine sort of operates differently than that what we end up getting is um we already sort of have that compressed air which i believe now i'm i'm going to try and just break it down um the best way i can that air is already compressed and because we're compressing it it's heating up and everything and it's heated already past the point of the um the boiling point of that fuel right with that fuel, right, once it's injected, right, since it doesn't have a spark plug, it's injected and it's already boiled, it, it sort of boils immediately and causes that expansion. So as we're injecting, it's slowly expanding and expanding and expanding and everything. And that's where we get our work production from, right? Um, there are four processes you need to know with the diesel engine also, like the auto engine. And the first one is the same. So from one to two, we have an isentropic compression. Now, from two to three, that's where that difference comes about. We have a constant pressure heat addition. And we're going to see how that sort of helps out the diesel cycle there rather than that constant volume. Um, from three to four, we have an isentropic expansion. And then from four to one, we have a constant volume heat rejection. Now, um, the only difference here is just that constant volume, constant pressure heat addition, right? Um, you don't need to change anything else out of these other three um, stages that are going on, right? Now, um, it's sort of the same thing basically on what I did in the auto cycle. So go back and refresh yourself on the auto cycle if you haven't looked at that video. But basically something sort of goes on during this constant pressure heat addition. So um, we have, we have um, work out at the same time as we have Q in, right? So we end up having this. Um, let me think really quick. We have Q in minus work out which gives us delta u right and then when we do this um let's do this let's solve for q in um basically what we end up getting is okay so we have this, right? It's constant pressure. And we know that work when we have constant pressure, right? It's just our PDV, right? And that PDV, because it's constant pressure, becomes P delta V. So we have P, or if, you know what? Let me do this first. Let me do it like this so it's sort of more recognizable for us. Let me say delta U plus workout instead of workout plus delta U. So delta U plus workout, right? And we know what our delta U is already, right? That is um, our, that is our U. Oh, let me leave it like that. So we have delta U and then we have our P delta V. So we have P V3 minus V2, right? And when we end up getting this, um, we end up, um, okay, so we have our U, three minus u2 and everything right plus p v3 minus v2 right and what we end up getting this this should look familiar to you this is really just h right and let me just double check myself to make sure that i'm i'm i'm, I'm making sense here but yes we have our um our h 
Because H, if you remember, and by H I mean enthalpy, that's just equal to our U plus PV, right? And it's, it's basically the same thing as we have going on here. Um, that's why I'm trying to be very careful with my, with my terminology and everything. But basically we have our, our delta U plus our PV. So that Q in is actually equal to our delta H, right? And, and I should actually be writing this in a lower case. So that Q in is equal to our delta H and everything. Um, let me write it like this, since I'm doing all lower cases. So when we have that delta H, right, we actually see that our Q in, if they're asking you to calculate the Q in, you can actually also call that CP delta T. And of course, that CP delta T is, um, is we know what to do, CP T3 minus T2 and everything, right? Um, basically, I want you to sort of remember how to do this. What I use to remember how to do this, I remember CP equals constant pressure, right? And CV, if you remember when we were calculating Q in and Q out in the auto cycle for our constant volume processes, it was CV delta T, right, for calculating our Q, right? So that's how I sort of differentiate between the two um, steps. And likewise, when we have our C, our constant volume, right, we're going to have our Q um, out being equal to CV, I believe it's T4 minus T1. And let me just quickly double check myself on that. It depends on whatever number is going to be, or on whatever number is going to end up being higher. So let's see. Our Q out. You know what? To be honest, it it it, it is T4 minus T1. Yeah. So it. I mean, but you're you're gonna know this because you're gonna have to end up with a positive number, right? So it's whatever. Um, it's you can sort of use logic there. So even if you hear me say like T1 minus T4 and then you see me do the opposite thing in a problem, that's you'll know why what I'm doing. But basically that's why. So I remember CV constant volume, CP constant pressure, you know, so that sort of um, makes sense. So that's why you can sort of do that and, and get your answer. Um, let's take a look at the PV and TS diagrams for um, the diesel cycle. So with the diesel cycle, um, we end up getting this. We end up getting something that looks like this. Um, let's start out here. So let me call that my, my step one. We get something that's like this. You might say, hey, that looks pretty similar to the auto cycle um, graph. But actually with the diesel cycle, we end up getting something that looks like this. So we sort of go past the point that we had with the auto cycle, right? Then constant pressure, right? We end up doing something like this. And then um, for three to four, we end up coming back like this. And then constant volume, it's this. And those, those should actually connect. I didn't draw that properly. But yeah, that's from one, two, three, and four. And again, in these processes, we have certain things. Isentropic compression, right? We're putting work um, into the system, basically. Um, from two to three, we have something, something sort of weird going on here. So we have our Q in, right? So we know we have that, right? Q in. But at the same time, we have work coming out. And, and you can sort of see that PV, right? We have a P delta V. And that's why you sort of saw me do that PDV whole thing right there, right? And then again, here, we have work coming out. And, and it makes sense, right? And then here we have Q out. So, so your total work with the diesel cycle, right? Is equal to, let's call this work one work two, right? And that's going to be equal to our CP delta T. And let me write CP T3 minus T2 since we have two delta T's that we're dealing with. Plus our CV T4 minus T1. 
So that's your total workout for the diesel cycle. And then again, you're gonna have that whole net thing going on inside of here. That's your PV diagram for the um, um, diesel cycle. For the TS diagram, we're gonna get something that sort of looks like this. Um, it's, it, it looks pretty similar to the um, um, auto cycle. So we have an isentropic compression and then we have, we have, it starts out like this. So from one to two, we get something like this. And I really hope I didn't draw this improperly in the last video. From one to two, we go straight up, isentropic, right? So then from two to three, we get something that goes like this and something that goes like this. And let me draw this a little bit longer, just to give us a better view and everything. So we get something that goes like this. And from one to two, again, we have our work in from two to three, we have our um, we have our work out, and we also have our Q in, right? From three to four, we have our um, work out also, and then from four to one, we have our um, Q out. So, and it makes sense, right? You must see me drawing all these arrows and everything. But once you know these four processes, 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 you're going to know what to do. So, that's basically all there is to the diesel cycle. Oh, one more thing. Um, you also have that same compression ratio in the diesel cycle. So, you also have that V1 over V2 or V1 over V2, right? Depending on if it's specific or not. But you also have another... Um, um, ratio so this is the compression ratio right so for that compression ratio we have that v1 over v2 right for our cutoff ratio you we hear them talking about a cutoff ratio and this will generally be much higher than compression ratio i think you have cutoff ratios of around like 18 19 or something something like that you're gonna have v3 over v2 so you're going to have this or V3 over V2, but that's basically what it means. So if you hear them say cutoff ratio, that's what they're talking about. And be very careful not to confuse these two because it's very easy to do so, okay? So that's basically what you have with the diesel cycle. Um, let me check if I missed anything. Um, I guess I can talk about efficiency um, in the diesel cycle. Or you know what? We can go ahead and save that for another video. Um, basically, that's what you're going to have there um that's really all there is to the diesel cycle um we're gonna still do example problems and everything but that's basically all you need to know if you didn't understand anything i said please feel free to leave comments in the comment section please don't forget to like and subscribe tell your friends and let's keep learning thermal thank you